these guys seem more interested in posturing on the fungus and getting involved in a punch up rather than meeting a female. G'day there. Don't worry, we'll get back to the fisticuff shortly. There are many species of flies across several fly families that are associated with fungi. For example, there is a fly known as the mushroom forward fly that is a major pest of commercial mushrooms in many parts of the world. The flies themselves don't do anything much at all, but it's their larvae, otherwise known as maggots, which do all the damage. I'm sure you've heard of the insects known as fungus gnats. Confusingly, flies in several different fly families are known as fungus gnats. But the ones that can be a nuisance in homes and offices and greenhouses are usually members of the family Sciaridae. These fungus gnats can be a bit of a problem with potted plants and seedling trays. The adult fungus gnats are quite dark, somewhat mosquito-like, and about three to four millimetres long. They may sometimes be referred as dark-winged fungus gnats, and they are usually species in the genus Bradesia. If you find pale see-through maggots with dark heads in your potting soil, they are likely to be fungus gnat larvae. These larvae may eat the root hairs of potted plants and even tunnel into the stems. They can be really damaging to seedlings. But it seems that it is the adult flies flying about that annoy people the most, particularly in homes and office settings. It's pretty easy to deal with them though. There are commercially available nematodes which target fungus gnat larvae that can be watered in but you might not need any commercial products at all. Fungus gnat larvae prefer moist soil and they are usually concentrated in the top few centimetres of potting soil. So if you let that top layer dry out between waterings, you'll go a long way to controlling fungus gnats. So far, we've only looked at a couple of species in two families of flies that are associated with fungi. There's a whole lot more. And here's a list right here, but you don't want me to talk about them, do you? You just want to get back to the boxing match. If you like this video so far, please give it a thumbs up. There's something rather special at the end of this video if you stick around. Here is the pugnacious fly in question. It is relatively common in Australia. They are medium sized flies, somewhere around eight to 10 millimeters long. So they're a bit bigger than a house fly, but smaller than a blowfly. The males are noted for perching on the top of various fungi, including common fungi like field mushrooms. On small fungi, there is usually one male per fungal cap, and he tries to defend it from competing males. The aim is to mate with a female that is attracted to the fungus. She wants to lay her eggs in the gills of the fungus, and then the hatching larvae can feed there. On bigger fungi like these ones here, several males compete for space on the same fungus. There are so many perched up here, these guys seem more interested in posturing on the fungus and getting involved in a punch up rather than meeting a female. While watching these flies, I noticed that the males in dominant positions on top of the fungus seemed completely unaware of visiting females because the females landed below the fungus near the gills. They didn't land on the cap. The females always seem to mate with males on the periphery of the fungus. This tangle of legs indicated here is a mating pair of flies. There's a life lesson in there somewhere. Perhaps being king of the castle is a fool's errand. The fungus the flies are posturing on is a rather special one. This is a ghost fungus. What makes this fungus special is that it glows in the dark. This phenomenon is known as bioluminescence. The fungus creates its own light through a chemical reaction that involves a compound called luciferin and an enzyme called luciferase. So all those lucifer references must be because if it glows in the dark, it's the work of the devil. I don't think there's anything devilish about these fungi at all. They look more like fairy lights at night. Why this fungus emits light 
is not fully understood. Some suggest that it attracts insects to the fungus at night so they can help disperse the spores of the fungus. A bit like um, a flower attracting a day-flying insect to collect pollen and disperse pollen. A scientific study from 2016 concluded that the ghost fungus does not attract spore dispersing insects. The paper also concluded that the bioluminescence might be an incidental byproduct of the metabolism of the fungus. Who knows? If you want to see a different fly larva in action, check out this video up here. And thanks for watching.